Hello, this is Patrick Hu, CEO of Moffitt Cancer Center. We're coming at you from the annual meeting of ASCO in Chicago, Illinois, 2023. We have Dr. Martine Exterman with us, head of geriatric <laughs> oncology. So thanks so much for uh, being here with us today. Well, you're welcome, and it's a pleasure to be here and share what's new in the field of geriatric oncology. So tell me, why is it important to have a group that focuses on geriatric oncology? Well, as we age, we become more diverse. And uh, we also get more cancers. So half of the cancers happen beyond the age of 70, and you can be very different from each other above the age of 70. So you need to do not only precision cancer care for the cancer, you need also to do precision cancer care for the patient and how they interact with each other. <laughs> That's great. So what's uh, new here? What's exciting here at ASCO for geriatric oncology? Well, um, I'll start with a couple of uh, abstracts from Muffet, actually, yes. uh, where we started looking about how our oldest patients are, going, uh, are doing with CAR-T therapies. And uh, Dr. Rosenthal looked at uh, uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients age 75 and older and see how they did with CAR-T therapy. And we have you know, about 60 of them right now uh, that we have already done at Moffitt. And the good news is they seem to tolerate that as well as the younger patient. They have the side effects, okay? They, they, they have the neuro and the immune side effects, but they seem to be doing well through the acute phase of treatment. Now, the bad news is we still, it's not the magic bullet yet. Uh, we only have 38% of them who were alive at one year, so we still have work to do and, and progress to make. And then we look at myeloma patient, that was the, that's the Modi's abstract, and uh, at frailty, and they did not see a difference in frailty between those younger than 70 and those above 70. So again, uh, about the same picture, they had a tolerance that was similar, but frail patients did not do well, no matter what their age. Well, that's a really important finding because yeah. a lot of times in clinical trials where yeah. these uh, drugs get FDA approved, uh, mm -hmm. there's limits and older mm -hmm. patients aren't allowed on the clinical trials. And yet, mm -hmm. really as we age, there's a lot more cancer. So it's right. really important to go back and look and see if uh, it's safe to give older patients. And it sounds like CAR-T mm -hmm. therapies in general are safe to give older patients. Yeah, it, it looks like uh, probably because we select them well as well with a geriatric assessment. and. It may sound weird to say that we do geriatric assessment in our CAR-T patients, but our CAR-T group is very keen on doing that uh, to, to make sure that we select patients appropriately and that we support if they have deficits and we, we address that upfront before the beginning of the treatment. So while uh, mm -hmm. if there's an older patient that's getting CAR-T therapy, uh, you'll support them as part of the geriatric oncology group to make sure that all of the comorbidities and other things are being followed. Absolutely, and we have been trying to spread throughout Moffitt uh, a whole geriatric assessment, and other centers are doing that too. I, I think, you know, three years ago, we had randomized studies showing we decrease toxicity of treatment, we improve uh, the outcomes of these patients. So other centers are also doing like us and trying to implement that in, in settings as diverse as surgery, transplant, uh, CAR T, of course, the usual chemotherapy patients, and I'm glad to see that spreading and and and, and really uh, the evidence-based medicine to advance. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, tell me, uh, are there other uh, fun findings here at ASCO for geriatric oncology? Yes. So uh, it, I was looking at the abstracts. There is a theme of several abstracts which is that people are trying to integrate the evaluation of frailty into the medical record so that uh, beyond uh, your ECOG PS, people can really have reliable frailty index that they could look at along with the lab results and other things to be best to, to best estimate what a patient can do with chemotherapy. So uh, I think getting the geriatric assessment into medical record is very hot right now. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Exeron, for being with us today and for leading all our important geriatric uh, adult oncology efforts at Moffitt Cancer Center. Uh, and thanks for your time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to talk with you, as Dr. always. Dr. Martine Exeron from our geriatric oncology group at Moffitt Cancer Center.